Hi, I'm Rebecca Hammond with Developer Town, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an approval process only using a Power Apps Canvas app. Let's start by taking a look at a sample of what an approval process built inside of a Canvas app could look like. Here you can see I have a time off request app. So what you would do is you would go in here and you would request time off. You can see we have a very simple form here. I'm going to go ahead and submit this using myself as the manager so you can see how the notification gets delivered. We'll hit submit and this will submit the data to my data source and it will also notify the manager that I've requested time off. In this case that would be me. So if we go over to Outlook and we go into the inbox you can see that I've received a request for time off notification. It includes a greeting, a little bit of text, and a link. This link will take the manager directly to a screen inside of the same app where I submitted the request. However, this screen is only accessible using that link received in the email. It takes them to their time off request hub, if, if you want to call it that, where it shows pending requests, completed requests, so they can click through here and see what is outstanding for them to take action on. On the form, they can reassign this to another manager, review any comments the employee has added as part of their request, make a decision on whether this request is approved or declined, and log their own comments, which the end user would then see as well. They can hit submit once they're done with that and you can see it rolls off of their pending list. It puts it in the completed request lists. They can also review these to see their own comments and and look through you know archived information here. What they can't do is action this or change anything once it's complete. So this gives you an idea of how you can really customize this for your approval process without using a single power automate. So let's get started and I'll show you how this was created. First, we're going to start with our data source. For this demo, I'm going to go ahead and use the existing data source for the app that I just showed you. You can create whatever you need to. It will work if you are using SQL, Dataverse, Excel, if you want to use an Excel spreadsheet, SharePoint, any data source you have set up, this method will work. So once we have our data source created, we're going to go over to our Power Apps portal, which is make.powerapps.com. We're going to select New. We're going to choose a Canvas app, and we'll go ahead and give this a name. And, all right, once this loads up, we're going to start by adding our data sources. The first one here is our SharePoint list. And our second data source is going to be the Outlook connector. You can use Gmail or any other mail connector you have available within your organization. Okay, once our connections are ready to go, We'll go back over to our tree view and we're going to rename this new request. And we'll go ahead and add a second screen, which we will call approvals. All right, starting with our new request screen. First, we're going to want to add a, an edit form and we'll want to hook this up to our data source. Once our fields appear, we can go ahead and clean up anything we're not going to need for this particular request. Okay. 
And for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to focus on functionality. I won't be going over branding. However, if you are interested in learning how I branded the previous app, feel free to make comments below and we can certainly create a video on that content as well. All right, once we have our form, we'll go ahead and add our submit button. And we'll go ahead and hook this up. All right, the next step in this is to initiate an email. You, and you might be thinking we should put this on the submit button. However, if you have any issues with your form, say you have a required field that gets missed, if you put the email on your submit button and someone misses a required field and the form errors out, that email is still going to be sent. So it could cause some confusion. In order to avoid that, what we want to do is we want to put the the email functionality on the on success property of our screen or our form, pardon me. So if I go over here, let's see, I have cheated a little bit. I have my formula all typed out, but we'll go ahead and walk through what you're seeing here. We're starting with using our Outlook connector and we're using the send email version too. The next item is who this email gets sent to. You may want to set this up in a dynamic way where it, it does it for, you know, whomever is entered in the manager field. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to keep it simple and keep myself in here. The next line item is the subject line for the email. So we just have a very simple string of text and that's paired with who the employee is for ease of the manager. They'll see it in their subject line. And then a very simple body to the email, which includes that link. The last thing we're going to add on to here is we're going to do a reset form. Just so this resets itself every time it's submitted. Right, so that is our on success. And now what we need to do is we need to get the link for this actual application. Since I just created it, this is just a sample link to the previous app. So let's go ahead and go over here and we want to save. And then we're going to go back over to our make.powerapps.com. As you can see, here is our app. So what we need to do is go over to the ellipsis and we're going to go down to details. From here, we're going to grab our web link and copy this. And back over here, we're going to replace this URL. And now what we need to do is we need to add a parameter to this URL to make it unique so that when the manager clicks from the email, it sends them directly to the screen that we want them to go to, in this case being their approval hub. So the way we do that is we need to set a parameter on the app start screen property. So if we go over to our app on our start screen, we're going to create an if statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell Power Apps if our certain parameter that we're going to set is met, then show the approval screen. If not, show the new request screen. So we're just going to pick any kind of identifier we want. This can be quite literally anything you want. So for this, we're going to call it screen ID. Equals approval. You could use a number. You could use any other kind of identifier for this one as well. Whatever makes sense for your use case. That's what you want to put in here. In this case, I'm going to use approval so that it's pretty evident that it's the approvals, the approval screen. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say 
if that parameter is met, we want you to go to the approvals screen. If not, then we want you to go to the new request screen. So a pretty simple formula to put in here. Next, what we need to do is go back to our on success property and we need to add that parameter to the end of this URL. The way we do that is ampersand and then those two descriptors that we just created, we're going to put here. So in this case, it is screen ID equals approvals. And you'll notice you don't need quotes around this. It'll work just as is. So we'll go ahead and click save. All right, now let's go ahead and try it out. Oh, rookie mistake there. Of course, we need to make sure our form is set to new. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. hit submit. Our form refreshes as expected. Let's go over here to Outlook and see if I've got a new email. I do. Excellent. Now when I click this link it should take us to a blank page because we haven't actually put anything on the approval screen yet. So let's click this. We're going into the correct app and we're on a blank blank screen. So the behavior that we intended is successful. So we can go ahead and go back to our, our app. And from there, we can populate our approval screen. So we can add a gallery. And we'll do our employee name, display name, and let's add the leave type. Right. And then the next step is to add an edit form. Hook it up to our data source. Decide which fields we need. Clean this up, you know, as you need to for your, your business use case. And then from here, you can, you can hook this up so that it, it is um, mapped to the gallery. So when they click on the item, So we're going to go ahead and type in our gallery one dot selected. And from here, if we play this, you can see the information is changing. So from here, you can customize this any way you need to. Like I mentioned, we're not going to go into branding here, but this gives you a really simple rundown of how to set this up for your own use case. Um, let us know in the comments if you like this content and you want to see more of it, and thank you for watching.